John chapter 14 from verse number 12. John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Get a microphone for JP quickly, whoever is there. Next verse. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. We have seen that this is talking about doing the works in the name of Jesus. Doing miracles in the name of Jesus. Look at Mark chapter 16 verse 15 to 18. Mark chapter 16 verse number 15 to 18. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So the name of Jesus is our authority to do the works of Jesus. The name of Jesus is our authority to do the works of Jesus. To heal the sick, to cast out devils. To heal the sick, or to cast out demons. Imagine a Christian who has never cast out demons. I mean, just imagine. You've been born again five years, ten years, and you have never had the opportunity to cast out a demon. I mean, you won't know the joy of the authority you carry. Go and look for demons somewhere and cast them out. I mean, just go and look for them. Go to the hospital. Go on the streets. Get somebody born again and cast out the demons. As a child of God, you must at least cast out a demon in your lifetime. At least. Go there and flex some muscles. Go there and exercise what you carry. Light is useless in light. Light is only useful in darkness. Go flex some muscles. Go tell some demon, hey, out. As a child of God, you should do that. Cast out demons. One day, you know, a Christian will say, well, one day I'll be able to. No, no. You were able to cast out demons the day you got born again. From the moment you received Christ, you were in the capacity and capability to cast out demons. He said, he that believes on me. You know, there's no faith needed to cast out demons. Let me repeat that again. There's no faith needed to cast out demons. You don't need faith to cast out a demon. You don't need faith to heal the sick. I repeat, you don't need faith to heal the sick. All the faith you needed to heal the sick was the faith it took you to get saved. All the faith you needed to cast out demons was the faith it took you to get born again. That's why Jesus said, he that believes in me. Now, we started examining the name of Jesus in prayer a few weeks ago. In John chapter 16, you know, the Bible tells us there's a man of God by the name of Elijah. The Spirit of God came upon him and he outran a chariot. <laughs> he actually outran a chariot. In those days, a chariot was the fastest mode of transportation. And a man outran a chariot. There was another man in the Bible by the name of Philip who outran time. He outran time. Philip outran time by the Spirit of God. He was in one location. Within, within a microsecond, he was in another location with distance. He outran time. That means you see him there. Within a second, you see him somewhere else. That's the anointing of the Spirit. Even Jesus outran time. You remember one time he was in the ship far away from destination. Far away from destination. The disciples saw him far away from where he was heading to. Within a second, he had arrived. Within a second, he had compressed time and he was at destination. The Spirit of God in him enabled him to do that. You know, the Spirit of God enables the believer to do what naturally cannot be explained. That's why it's called a miracle. 
because the, 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 the constitution of the born again man has a component called miracles. Miracles are not what the believer looks for. Miracles are how the believer lives his life. So in John chapter 16 verse 23, John chapter 16 verse number 23. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name. Please listen to this. If you give your time to the word of God, and if you are consistent with the things of the spirit of God, you will excel. If you give your time to the word of God and you're consistent with the things of the spirit of God, you will excel in life. You know, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7 tells us, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse number 7. <clears throat> but refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Exercise yourself rather unto godliness. Exercise. So there's a place of exercise in the things of the spirit. Exercise yourself rather. So when we come for prayer cruise, we're exercising ourselves. When we go out for evangelism, we're exercising ourselves. When we pray for the sick, we're exercising ourselves rather unto godliness. Look at the next verse, verse number 8 of First Timothy chapter 7. It says, For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Godliness is profitable unto all things. So exercise yourself to godliness. If you give yourself to exercise in word and prayer, your profit will show, I tell you. Your profit will definitely show. You know, many of us want to just do a temporal practice, like touch and go. The Christian life is not a touch and go. The Christian life is how we live. That's how we live every day. The practice of the word, the practice of prayer, the practice of the things of the spirit has to be daily. Every day you practice the things of the spirit. Every day you study the word. Every day you practice praying and you give yourself to prayer. Every day you meditate the word of God. And every day you study the word. I mean, it's got to be your lifestyle. Hear the word every day. Spend time in the word. When I was in Johannesburg, South Africa, one of our, one of our new coordinators met me and said, Papa, you see this, my, my little girl? She's 18 years old. But she is not able to sleep every night until I play your teaching. Every night she struggles to sleep. But the moment I start playing your teaching and she begins to listen to you teach, she sleeps. She's so used to your voice that your voice is her, her, her home. Once she hears your voice, no matter the agitation, she calms down. That is, they, they, they grew her up hearing me teach. The word of God has become part of her system. That's how you ought to be as a child of God. You play the teachings in your room through the night. Play the teachings in your room. Play them in your car while driving. The word of God is, is alive. The word of God is always alive. Play the teachings. Let that word wash over your mind. Let that word wash over your body. Let that word wash over that environment. Let that word wash over the way you are thinking. It's so critical. You practice. You give yourself to the word of God that your profiting may appear to all. Then you will be a success. And as a Christian, success always comes from preparation. And you know preparation plus diligence equals to success in life. Preparation plus diligence. Now John chapter 16 again verse 23 to 24. John 16 23 to verse 24. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Next verse. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Hitherto have you asked nothing. So from Genesis to John chapter 16, they had not asked anything in his name. So all the prayers that were prayed from Genesis to John 16, they were not prayers in the name of Jesus. He thought, oh, up till now, you have not asked anything in my name. So the name of Jesus, therefore, is our authority for works and also our authority for prayer. 
we have established that there is the Jesus, the anointed one in the four gospels and Jesus, the exalted one after the resurrection. And we preach Jesus, the exalted Jesus today. They preach Jesus, the anointed one in the four gospels. This is just a recap. If you follow the series from part one to ten, you will get all of this in details. We preach Jesus at the right hand of the father who has all authority, all demons and all dominion and all power belongs to him. Matthew 28, 18, he says, All authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. That is Jesus, the risen Lord, or Jesus, the exalted Savior. And that's what we practice today. Now look at John chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. John chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. Next verse. For the father loveth the son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that he may marvel. Now, did you observe? He says, the father loveth the son, and showeth him all things. Present. And he will show him greater things. He showeth him all things now, but he will show him greater things in the resurrection. Right now in the four gospels, he shows the son all things, but he will show him greater works than these in the resurrection. That you may marvel. Now this is going to happen later because that is Jesus, the exalted one, will be greater than Jesus, the anointed one, in the four Gospels. Now look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. Please pay attention. Matthew 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But my Father only. Now Jesus makes a statement here that throws many people off balance theologically. Many people of balance. Many people, and I've had people ask me questions about why didn't Jesus know, you know. Now, when you read this, you will think that what Jesus was talking about here is the day of the church or the rapture. When he said, my father only, you could say he didn't mention himself. But look at Mark chapter 13 verse 32. Mark chapter 13 verse number 32. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Neither the Son. That's where the problem is with theolog a lot of people theologically. So Jesus makes what we call the rapture look more mysterious. Like we think it's a disappearing act. Nobody will know. You know, some people think rapture is disappearing. But it's not disappearing, I've taught you that. You are just preparing for church one Sunday morning and everybody disappears. That's the way we think the rapture is. Why would Jesus say he didn't know? He didn't know because he was Jesus the anointed. In the four gospels, he didn't know all things. Who was a man? The incarnate word. He was the man. He was the incarnate word. He suffered and died for man and didn't know everything as a man. How many of you remember? He grew in wisdom. He grew in stature. He grew. So he didn't know everything. So when he said he doesn't know the day, he was speaking as a man in the four gospels. But Jesus is not talking about his permanent state here. His present state. Because the father has revealed all things to us in the son. You didn't hear that. Let me repeat. The father has revealed all things to us in the son. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse number 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Next, next verse. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now as a thief in the night. How many of you have seen the movie? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> thief in the night. Left behind. You saw that movie? Yes. Distant Thunder. You know? Rapture. 666. Six, six. They were called the Mark 4 films in the 80s. And you pray every night. I remember every night I prayed very seriously before I slept. 
Because the films gave the impression that Jesus would come in the night. So night times were very serious holy moments. In the daytime you can play around. But every night you must settle the matter before you sleep. In case the rapture takes place that night. Now look at that First Thessalonians chapter 5. Read from verse 2 to 4. Pay attention now. <clears throat> For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Next verse. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Did you see that? But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are not in darkness. Turn to your neighbor and say, hey neighbor. You are not in darkness. So the day will not overtake you as a thief in the night. That means you will know. You will know the day. We will just meet and say, you know it's next Wednesday, right? Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. You know it's next Wednesday, right? Yeah. And one will say, you know it's 4 p.m. 4 p.m. our time, right? We will know. We will know the day. We are not in darkness. Look, read for me the next verse. Verse 5 of that scripture. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. You are not of the night. You are not of darkness. So will the church know the day of the rapture? The church will know not only the day. The church will know the hour. The church will know the minute and the second of the rapture. But you know all this mixture message, materialistic gospel, transactionary gospel, all this gospel of delivering Christians and throwing them on the ground to vomit every Sunday and throwing them on the ground. All these messages of mixture of law and grace will not allow believers to know the day. All these songs of the something that makes me come into your presence is your foolishness that makes you come to his presence. Because if you know you live in him and he lives in you, nothing will make you come to his presence. You are the custodian of his presence. You carry his presence all the time. Nothing makes you come. That's where you live, 247. If I'm teaching good, somebody shout glory. But you know, all those kind of teachings will not allow the believer's sharpness, will not allow the believer's discernment to know that day. There's a generation of people that understand revelation knowledge. That's the generation that will know the day. That's the generation that will know the second. That's the generation that will know the moment. And the Bible tells us that when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. Jesus made that statement because he was not yet exalted. That's why he said he didn't know the, the time. But when he was exalted, he said, all authority is given to me. All insights, every revelation, every knowledge is in Christ. And that's why we will know. Look at something else Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verse number 6. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse number 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying... Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Next verse. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Next verse. But he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and he shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. When will you restore the kingdom again to Israel? It is not in your power to know what the father has in his hand but you shall receive power that means when you receive power you will know when the kingdom will be restored but now you are not received the power so you will not know but once you receive power it is in the father's power and you shall receive that power which means you shall know the day you shall know the times you shall know the seasons you shall know the time so if the times and the seasons are in the power of the Father and you shall receive power, that means when you walk in power, you will know the times and seasons. So let nobody trouble you about rapture. Let nobody pray for you to be rapturable. You were rapturable the day you got born again. 
The church of Jesus will never leave this earth until the whole earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. From Cairo to Japan, from Japan to America, from America to, 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 to Congo Brazzaville, from Congo Brazzaville to Ghana, all over the nations of the earth, to Europe, to the United Kingdom, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. And I have news for you. You are part of the army that will preach this gospel on every street and you will preach this gospel in every nation. Somebody shout, I am anointed to preach the gospel. I didn't hear a powerful amen. So when Jesus made that statement that he does not know the day or the hour, he had not risen from the dead. He was Jesus, the anointed one. But after his resurrection, he said all insights, all revelations have been given to him. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Next verse. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. God has revealed them to us by his Spirit. We are not in the darkness. We are in the light. God has revealed them to us by his Spirit. Jesus has triumphed over death and over hell and has given unto us the revelation. Somebody say with me very loud, I walk in the light as he is in the light. I do not walk in darkness. I am not confused. I have revelation. I know the future by the spirit of God. I didn't hear a powerful amen. You know, Brother Paul talks about, talked about the times in his epistle. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse number 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So Paul talked about the times. Times. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. 2 Timothy 3 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. So he was talking about times by the Spirit. And somebody says, what about the seven churches in the book of Revelation? What about the seven churches? Which one is your church there? Well, Jesus was not even talking to churches. He was talking to the angel. Angel. So the instructions in, in Revelation chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3 were pastoral instructions to the angel of the church. When he said you are, you are neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out. He was not talking to the church. He was talking to the pastor who was mixing law and grace. Who was preaching finished work and legalism. He was talking to pastors who were preaching materialism. He was addressing the angel of the church. The pastor of the church. He was not talking to individuals. It's very important you know that. Now, so in John chapter 16, where we started reading from, Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Now, we have been wrongly misinformed. Many people think by shouting in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, it will be done like a formula. But we need to know what praying in the name of Jesus is. What praying in the name of Jesus is. Now we've got the idea from Matthew 28, 19. Where he says, go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That is where we have the idea about using the name of Jesus as a formula. But I have told you exegetically that Jesus did not make that statement of baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It's not there in the original. It was added by the, vol the, 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 you know, the, the Latin Vulgate. It's not in the original at all. And you will not find that teaching anywhere else in the Bible. There's nothing like the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Ghost. The Bible only teaches the name of Jesus. And we took time to deal with that a few weeks ago. Now in Matthew 28 is where we get the formula name. When you pray, you must mention in Jesus' name. But the Bible doesn't teach us to mention the name of Jesus in prayers. Let me repeat that again. The Bible doesn't teach us to mention the name of Jesus in prayer. But you need to listen to everything I will explain now. 
The Bible again doesn't teach us to mention the name of Jesus in prayer. It's not at the mention of the name. There's nothing like at the mention of the name in the Bible. We don't need to mention the name of Jesus to get prayers from God. The Bible never teaches that. It's because we have the formula mentality. Jesus didn't say when you are praying, mention my name. He didn't say that. He said whatever you ask the Father in my name. In my name. So we think we can mention his name, then the Father will hear us. Why that is important is because you think you cannot talk to God without mentioning his name. And if you cannot talk to God without mentioning the name of Jesus, that means you have no right standing with God. If you cannot talk to God directly without mentioning the name of Jesus, it means you and God have no relationship. It means you don't have a right standing with God. If you go somewhere now and you say, Gabriel, and they said, which Gabriel? You say, Gabriel from Ikotek Pene. Gabriel from Ike. What do you want, Gabriel? And he says, well, I want to see the managing director of this company. And they say, he's not around. Then Gabriel calls me and says, well, uh, Dr. Abel, they didn't allow me to enter. They say the MD is not around. Then I say, Gabriel, did you call my name to them? Did you tell them I sent you? He said, no, sir. I said, tell them I sent you. Then he goes back to the person and says, well, it's Dr. Abel Damina that sent me to come and see the MD. And then they said, come in. And we didn't know he's the one that you were coming for. And they opened the door for you to go in. It means Gabriel has no standing with that MD. But Dr. Abel Damina has a standing with that MD. And because of Dr. Abel Damina, Gabriel can have access to that MD. Now, that's the mentality we have. So, since I and God don't have a relationship, since I and God don't have a standing, it is Jesus and God that have a relationship. So, every time I want to go to God, I must go through Jesus. The moment your mentality is like that, you are functioning outside the word of God. The moment you think like that, you are thinking outside the word of God. So, it is not mention my name. It's not the mention of the name. It's not the mention of the name. That means you cannot go to that office without Dr. Abel. And that's the mentality we have when we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. In the powerful name of Jesus. In the most powerful name of Jesus. In the majestic name of Jesus. In the impeccable name of Jesus. In the most glorious, adorable, excellent, most sweet name. You needed to only come through Jesus once and that's in salvation. From the moment you came through Jesus once, you and the Father established a relationship. You don't need Jesus anymore. You have direct access to the Father. You are now in the family. Jesus never used his name before the Father. He never mentioned his name before the Father. Why? Because he had the consciousness of relationship. Now, that was his father and he was the son. Please pay attention. You see, you have the mentioning of the name of Jesus mentality to be able to talk to the father. We even got some stuff from Philippians chapter 2. At the name of Jesus, every name must bow. Then we added at the mention of the name. We even created a song. At the mention of the name. Every knee must bow. Uh, the mention, no, there's no mention in the Bible. That song is not true. That song is a lie. We even have a song like that. Demons, demons, trem, demons tremble at the sound of your name. At the sound of your name. So the demons tremble at the sound of your name. It is not an ordinary name. So what makes it not an ordinary name is the sound. So when you meet demons, in the name of Jesus, out. So if it's in Jesus' name, demons will not go out. It has to sound. At the sound. 
At the thunderous name of Jesus. At the earthquaking name of Jesus. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. Mama's advice. Well, how many of you remember that Jesus and Joshua are the same? Jesus is Joshua. Joshua is Jesus. So that means at the sound of Joshua. Demons are supposed to tremble. Now, Philippians chapter 2, before you leave this service and say, ah, they say we shouldn't be mentioned in the name of Jesus again. Well, if you are smart, you will listen to the series from part 1 to 10 to be able to understand what I'm doing here in part 11. I don't know if you follow what I'm saying here. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 10. Girl, let's read, let's go. Philippians chapter 2, from verse 5 to 10. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That's the incarnation. Now go on. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the knee of Jesus every knee should that bow. At what? At what, girl? That at the name of Jesus every <laughs> knee should bow. <laughs> Boss, I'm not coming to work today. <laughs> Read again. <laughs> that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. That at the name, that at the name, not at the mention, that at the name of Jesus. If I was translating that scripture today, I will say in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. That means the name of Jesus already has caused every knee to bow. And every tongue has been caused to confess of things in heaven, of things on earth, and of things under the earth. He is describing the bestowal of all authority which the Father has given to Jesus. He is not talking about mentioning a name at all. That's why we have lost so much respect for what the name stands for. So we use the name to cut cake <laughs> during wedding reception. We use the name to cut ribbons to open new buildings. We use the name to kiss the bride in the wedding receptions. You may kiss the bride at the, at the sound of the name. J. E. We've lost the meaning of that name. Now let's see something here. In Acts chapter 19 verse 13. Acts 19 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. Now hold on. These were some folks in the Bible. Pay attention now. When you are reading the Bible, you need to pay attention to the pretext and the posttext to understand the, the, the context. There was a vagabond there. Means we need to pay attention to what happened before this verse of scripture. So read for me verse 11 of that same Acts chapter 19 verse 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Verse 12. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. And the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Did you see that from the body of Paul? Special miracles were done by the hand of Paul. They were done by the hand of Paul. By the hand of Paul. So that people brought handkerchiefs and touched the body of Paul. And took the handkerchiefs to people that had demons. And when the handkerchiefs smelled Paul, I mean when the demons smelled Paul in the handkerchiefs, they took off for their lives. Diseases smelled Paul and escaped from the body of Paul. Paul was not distributing handkerchiefs or selling miracle handkerchiefs. People came with their handkerchiefs and touched his body. Yet the effulgence of Paul, the smell of Paul, cast out demons and healed the sick. Now, look at the next verse, verse 13 of that Acts 19. Read for me. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. They were calling the name. They were mentioning the name. 
Paul did not mention the name. Paul did not, just Paul, miracles, special miracles. There was no mention of the name. Handkerchiefs brought from the body of Paul were casting out demons. But these guys, even with the mention of the name, they mentioned the name of that man whom Paul preached. We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. Look at verse 14 of Acts 19. Verse number 14. And there were seven sons of one Siva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. Now they were calling the name, come out in the name of the God of my papa. Come out in the name of the God of my mama. In the name of the God of this commission. They are descendants of the seven sons of Skiva, people who pray like that. They are the junior brothers of these boys. In the name of my papa, because you, your own father, is a stepfather. So you don't have father. So you must use your papa's God. In the name of my papa. In the name of my mama, Mama Gio. The God of Mama Gio. The God of Papa Gio. Do it for me, the God of Papa Gio. See you unbeliever unbeliever I don't need Mama Gio's God I don't need Papa Gio's God I have a relationship with God therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God glory to God <laughs> they won't like this one <laughs> The God of this commission, shut up your mouth, man. Get born again and be free from the God of that commission. They that know their God, not they that know the God of their Papa Joe, they that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Glory to God. And the evil spirits answered them. <laughs> wala, wala, wala. JP, read for me. <laughs> Acts chapter 19, verse 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? <laughs> Identity crisis. Who are you? And the demon said, I said, who are you? <laughs> when you know who you are in Christ, you will not pray in the name of the God of this commission, Papa Joe, Mama Joe. No, no, in fact, they didn't know Jesus, but the evil spirits know Jesus. They didn't know Jesus. In the name of the man that Paul preaches, we are joy. But the evil spirit said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Identify yourselves. <laughs> now, pay attention here. <clears throat> I thought you said at the mention of the name. Who mentioned the name here? More appropriately, the seven sons of Sceva or the evil spirit? Jesus, I know. Demons tremble at the sound of that name. These ones did not tremble. They were the ones that sounded the name. Jesus, I know. These ones were speaking boldly. <laughs> Paul, I know. Why did he say that? Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. I love the way the Amplified Version puts it. And it's closer to the Greek. Actually, it's Paul, I have experienced. That's what they were saying. Paul, I have experienced. Jesus, I know. Some demons could have fled when the sons of Sceva did what they did. Because not all demons have the same level of intelligence. 
Some demons are smarter than others. Demons have different levels of intelligence. <laughs> you know, Jesus told us some demons that when they go out, they will come back after a while to check the house and see if the place is empty and cleaned. Then they will go and call seven more wicked demons. So there are different levels of wickedness in the demonic kada. Just like there are different levels of intelligence. Some demons are more wicked than others. Some are more intelligent than others. One time Jesus cast out a demon and it said to Jesus, where should I go? <laughs> Jesus said to the demon, come out. He said, yes, sir. To where? So Jesus now had to send them to pigs. <laughs> he had to give them a destination. To where? <laughs> okay, go to the pigs. So all demons are not at the same level of intelligence. But there's one who is experienced. How do we know? He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I have experienced except you. Identify yourselves. These are very intelligent deliberations. Who are you? He did not respond because it was a rhetorical question. Obviously, the demons know they were not Christians by the words they used. The demons could tell that these guys, these guys, mm -mm. the name of Jesus whom Paul preached, in the name of the God of my papa, in the name of the God of my mama Joe, the demon says, let's deal with this one small. Let's teach this one a little lesson. So the next time they come across people like us, they will respect us. Demons don't know who is a Christian, but they know those who deal with them. They don't know about that, bar, that rubber band you tie in your hand. I'm a covenant child. They have their own rubber band. They are not moved by that Bible you lie on top every night under your pillow. They have a bigger version than your own. Their own is the original Greek. <laughs> they are not moved by your title, brother, sister. Uh -uh. They only know those who deal with them. They know those who exercise authority over them. And they know them by the way they talk. They know those who know them. Now what did the demons do? The demons leaped on them and overcame them. That is the demon was angry. Now did you observe? Ordinary handkerchief from the body of Paul went casting out demons and somebody called Jesus and demons beat him. So the mention is not what gets the job done. The mention of the name is not what gets the job done. You have seen people sweating and shouting a whole church. Come out, come out, come out. Fire. And then the pastor will say, wait, wait, wait. How many of you are there? 2,000. Eh? What are you waiting for? Everybody, the whole church will start up. Fire, 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 fire. Then the demon will just be there dancing and having a nice time being entertained by the church. Everybody is sweating. That whole church plus their pastor, all of them, they don't know what they're doing. They are a joke. Satan is giving them work because they are stupid. I remember some years ago, I was in a conference somewhere at Uyo High School, right down there. We were having an all night service. And in the course of the service, a lady, as I, as I just started pr pr you know, praying before preaching, one lady just stood up there and screamed, Yeah! So I said, Silence! Silence! All shall take her out. So they took her out to the next classroom in Uyo High School. As soon as she entered the room, she dealt with all of them. The ushers took off and went and called pastors. Then Uyo pastors used to gather in one section to attend my all-night meetings. So the pastors were in one section. So they came and called them to go and help them take care of that demon because the demon has just all the ushers and taken over the classroom. <laughs> so the pastors, the pastors came to the classroom to cast out the demon. The moment they entered and the demon saw them enter, the lady tore her dress and stood stark naked 
all the pastors ran. Then one of them decided to be bold. He just walked to us and said, Come out now. Then the, the demons in the lady laughed. <laughs> Even you. <laughs> the moment he had, Even you, he walked back. <laughs> He went and joined the others. <laughs> the, the, the lady took over the room. I'm preaching and they're giving me signal. <laughs> so I asked everybody in the building to stand up and begin to pray and thank God for the word. I stopped the word halfway. Then I followed one of them to the room. The lady has taken over the room. Naked, she's jumping all over the place. The pastors are outside. Uh -uh. The demons should be outside. The pastors are inside. <laughs> But the pastors are outside and the demon is inside. As soon as I came in, I said, Sh shut up. I grabbed her and I said, wear her clothes back. They wore her clothes. And so I shut up. And in the name of Jesus, out. Yes. I said, don't trouble her anymore. All right, everybody. Wear her clothes. Bring her into the service. I went back, stopped the prayer and continued teaching. No time for drama. No time. Those who know what they carry don't talk too much. A boss that talks too much to his subjects has lost control. Out is out. Out is out. You must know who you are in Christ to function like that. You must know who you are in Christ to function like that. I just laugh when I see men of God casting out demons and sweating. It's either they don't know it or they are just acting to entertain the gullible audience. So it's not the mention of the name. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. How can you cast out a demon and you are screaming? Out! 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 And then after you shout out and you are telling, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? I am the son of the most high God. <laughs> the demons jumped out of the person and tore these boys to pieces. Seven people, one demon. It can happen to a believer who is ignorant. When you want to cast out demons and you bring out water and olive oil, they will collect the oil and pour your head. <laughs> They will collect the olive oil and pour your head. Because they know you're a joke. They will just laugh and say, ah, this one doesn't know anything. Olive oil, well, we are all working in the company that produces it. <laughs> we work in that company. <laughs> we are the ones supervising the staff. You want to scare us with olive oil that we are there when they are combining it? <laughs> or water. The bowl they were digging, we were there. We were the ones that make sure there was no accident because we had interest in the water. <laughs> they want to pour water and, and drive us. Acts 19.14. <laughs> Read for me Acts 19.14 to 16. <clears throat> And there were seven sons of one Siva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? Next verse. And the man in whom the evil spirit was, was leaped on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. <laughs> Next verse. <laughs> Next verse. <laughs> and this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. <laughs> After demons beat somebody, the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. <laughs> After demons beat somebody, wounded him, and tore them naked. The name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. <laughs> this 
this shows you that the name of Jesus is given as a privilege to those who are born again. It's not for mentioning. The name of Jesus is a position. It's a position. It's not a formula. It's a position. If you are born again in this house, you are in the name of Jesus. The moment you got born again, you are in the name. You are already in the name. You are in the name. As a husband, you don't have to tell your wife, I am your husband. She already knows. When you live in the consciousness of who you are, it reflects in the way you talk. Je Jesus and Paul had imbibed this position in Christ. That's why the demon said, Paul we know. Because Paul operated like Jesus. Paul functioned like Jesus. So the demons say, Jesus we know, Paul we have experienced. That one knows what he is doing. You, who are you? The demon identified Paul like Jesus. Because Paul talks like Jesus. Paul sees a demon and he says, come out. Come out. No one talks like that except he knows who he is. Paul sees someone disease in his body. He says, be healed. Be healed. He doesn't have to put in Jesus' name. It's like when I talk to my wife, I, I don't tell her, honey, get me a cup of tea. Get me a cup of tea. I don't tell her, honey, you know I'm, a, I'm your husband. Get me a cup of tea. Any husband who talks like that, something is wrong somewhere. Something is not again. I don't have to tell her I'm your husband. We already know both of us that I'm a husband. Honey, get me a cup of tea. Okay, get me a cup of tea. And she could just walk up to me and say, honey, I need 5,000 naira. And I just give her. She so doesn't say, honey, you know I'm your wife. Give me five. No, nobody talks like that. So when we know who we are and where we are in Jesus, we don't have to say, come out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name is our name. So all we say is, come out. We are in the name. We function in the authority of that name. So it's not the mention. It's not a formula. Don't see the name as a formula. Because if you do, you get it mixed up. Let's see several times where the name was used. Acts chapter 3 verse 3 after the resurrection. Acts of the apostles chapter 3 verse 3. Remember the beautiful gate? The man asking for arms, arms, arms. Read for me girl, 3-3. Three, three. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. Next verse. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. Look on us. Not look on Jesus. Look on us. Next verse. And he gave heed unto them, expecting yes. to receive something of them. Yes. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Silver and gold I have none. But such as I have, such as I have. He didn't say such as Jesus wants to bless you with. Such as I have, I give to you. That's not a formula. Is it wrong to mention the name? No, it's not. But even if you don't mention the name, you are in the name. In Acts chapter 5, St. Peter saw Ananias lie and he judged them without mentioning the name of Jesus. He told Ananias, you have not lied to men, but you've lied to the Holy Ghost. Men shall drag you out. The man fell down and died. When the wife came, he said to the wife, the same thing that happened to your husband will happen to you. Oh yeah, drag her out. That, the woman was gone. He didn't call the name of Jesus. Even though he used the authority wrongly, but he used the authority he used it directly. He used it directly. Later in Acts chapter 5 verse 15, read for me Acts chapter 5 verse 15 and 16. Please pay attention. <clears throat> in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing might overshadow some of them. At least the shadow of Peter. Kabayada. These men who knew who they were. Next verse. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. And they were healed every one of them. 
Who must have mentioned the name? Nobody. Peter is in the name. So he carries the healing power of the name. What about Acts chapter 8 verse 5? Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 verse number 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Six. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Seven. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. Philip did the miracles. Why? Because Philip is in the name of Jesus already. Philip did the miracles. Acts 9, 32 to 34. Acts 9, 32 to 34. And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydda. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which, he had, which had kept his bed eight years, and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. He arose. No formula. No, in the name of Jesus. In the mighty, in the glorious name. No. Look at verse 40. Acts 9, 40. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. And turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. In raising the dead, he didn't go there sweating. He just said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. He didn't say, Tabitha, in the glorious name, in the resurrection name, in the exalted name, in the dynamic name of Jesus. Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and she stood up. Why? Peter is in the name. I'm teaching good this morning. Peter is in the name. No formula. What we need to see in all of them is that the name of Jesus or Christ Jesus is the message they preached. So once they preach the message, the authority of the message is at work. Whenever you preach Jesus, his glory and power, his signs will follow you. Most times when the message don't carry Jesus, you don't have to use his name and call it in prayer. After you have preached giving to get, you have preached career, business exploits, strategic career positioning, key to having a wife, relationship panadol, keys to marital bliss. When you preach those kind of things, you must shout the wonderful name powerfully. Because you know what you preach is not good enough to command the manifestation. But when all you preach is Jesus and what he has done, you don't need to be calling Jesus. You just say, be healed. In the, you're already in the realm. Am I communicating at all? The message they preached was Jesus. So the message carried with it the manifestation of the name of Jesus. Am I teaching good? If you're catching my flow, shout hallelujah. Say with me very loud, I am in the name. Say it very loud, the name of Jesus belongs to me. The authority of Jesus belongs to me. What Jesus will do, his name will do. And because I'm in his name, what Jesus will do, I will do without a formula. That is my identification. I didn't hear a powerful amen. amen. What Jesus will do, I will do. Why? I am in his name. He said, greater than this because I go to my father. And because I go, I come where I am, you will be also. So we are where he is. The name of Jesus belongs to us. The authority of Jesus belongs to us. We function in that name. We operate in that name. And that name has become our identification. I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We are named by his name. Hallelujah. 
I say we are named by his name. Somebody shout it again two more times. The name of Jesus belongs to me. One more time. Say I own the name of Jesus. And I walk in that name. So when I speak, I'm speaking in that name. I do not come to church and say, well, Pastor Praise. Pastor Praise. In the name of Abel Damina, come. No, I just say, Pastor Praise, come. And he comes. Why? I am Abel Damina. I am in the name of Jesus. I don't have to specially say in Jesus' name. When I say, come, the authority of Jesus where I am backs what I say. Did you understand what I'm saying? So I can pray a whole prayer without calling the name of Jesus. And the prayer is done. Father, thank you that all is working according to plan. Thank you that my going out is blessed. My coming in is blessed. The lines are falling to me in pleasant places. I have favor with men. And this day is the day you have made. And this day is blessed. Glory to God. Amen. Did you see the way I prayed that prayer? I didn't put in Jesus' name, but it is in Jesus' name I prayed. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Now, for some of you, it will take you time to rework your thinking. It will take you time to renew yourself. Because you've been used to call in that name. So you pray, Father, in the name of, Father, I thank you, I bless you. Today, everything is going to, in Jesus' name, in King in Jesus. So, because you're used to King in Jesus. <laughs> King in Jesus. Mark. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> There's one guy that used to call him Savior Udo. He was a member of my father's church. Save your Udo. Wherever you are, if you're hearing my name, look for me because I'm looking for you. Save your Udo. He was a member of my father's church. When we start praying, and they now say, somebody should round up the prayer. If he says, in the name of Jesus, save your Udo, we shout, Mark. <laughs> Mark. Till tomorrow, I don't know what Mark is. But when I see you, you will explain to me what Mark. I think Mark is Amen. But since Amen will not come out with power, he now, he now moved from man to Mark. Mark. <laughs> I'm sure he thinks the pronouncement of Mark will get the answer. Some of you think when we say in Jesus' name, that's when the power comes. No, it is you are knowing that you are in that name that makes the power work. So walking in the consciousness of that name is what makes it. That's why the acknowledging of the, the communication of your faith will become effectual. How? By the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you because you are where? In Christ. Where are you? Where are you? So you are in the name. You are in the name. In him we live and move and have our being. Glory to God. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet this morning. Turn to your neighbor. Say, hey, neighbor. I am in that name. The authority of that name is my authority. What Jesus will do, his name will do. What his name will do, I am in that name. I will do what his name will do. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Some of you, I don't like the way you're talking. Say, hey, neighbor. I am in that name. What the name of Jesus will do, I will do. I am in that name. I cast out demons. In that name, I pray and get answers. In that name, I pray and heal the sick. In that name, when I sleep, I sleep in that name. When I travel, I travel in that name. When I eat, I eat in that name. And when I walk, I walk in that name. See, when you are conscious of that name, you will not need to cover the road with the blood of Jesus. I cover the road with the blood of Jesus. The blood. No, no, no. I am in that name. I am in that blood. So when I travel, the moment I set out on that road, that road is secure. 
and I walk in the consciousness of that name and I know that what cannot happen to the name of Jesus cannot happen to me because I am in that name. Glory to God. 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 The name of Jesus belongs to me. Father, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice in this service online on television. Wherever everyone hearing me teach this word is right now. This revelation grows big on your inside until nothing else matters. You function in this authority. You function in this authority. You function in this revelation. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the blessing over the household of faith. And thank you that your word keeps going forth. Your word keeps going forth. And our hearts keeps receiving. And our understanding keeps growing. And our minds keeps getting renewed. And we rejoice. And we thank you for testimonies. And we thank you that we function in this authority non-stop. And we function in the consciousness of this reality. We give you praise and glory. Thank you that sick bodies are healed right now. Bodies and yokes are destroyed right now. Satan, get your hands off of God's property. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And we rejoice that this morning we celebrate the victory that we have in you. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And every believer celebrates that answer right now in this building.